right here beside me, right there, is a spiny orb weaver spider. It's about a third of an inch in diameter. She's come to keep me company here in my little balcony container garden. And I really appreciate it. It's Caroline Chapman, and I'm the author of When We Were Gods. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a bug, a white bug with black spots and spines sticking out. But then it started to move. Oh my God, it was a spider, the weirdest spider I'd ever seen in my life. Of course, I was scared of it at first because it had those spines on the outside of it. <clears throat> but I looked it up on Wikipedia and found out that it's a very beneficial insect and not harmful to humans at all. They supposedly uh, are native to tropical and subtropical North America, South America, Central America, and there's different varieties of this type of spider in many places throughout the world. Like other orb weavers, they make a brand new web every day. You can see this web is just a beautiful work of art. This one is the female, and amazingly, she's larger. She looks pretty small to me, but she's larger than the male, who I've seen the male around now that I've learned about them, and he's pretty small. Oh, and right here beside me, you can't see it, but right here is a little male. They are just tiny compared to the female, and I guess they have only one job to do, whereas the female has to be bigger to create the eggs. Oh, it looks like that male has attached himself to my hat. Anyway, sweet little, nope, he's over there. Got it. He's going somewhere else. <laughs> They're pretty amazing. Just amazing. And you know, she is so clever. She knows that I walk through this place every day watering my plants on the balcony. And she made her web so it had an arch that I could walk through. And today, by mistake, I hit it with my hat. But she's still hanging out there. And I'm hoping to get a close-up of her working on the web today. We'll see. I was hoping that we would get some web making action as she repaired her web because I had broken part of it with my hat. But it looks like she's only interested in doing some grooming. Oh, and now she's resting. Well, that's it. Spiny back orb weaver spiders like to live on trees in forests and also bushy plants well guess what here are my okra plants in my containers on my balcony and they are certainly bushy plants and that is where the little spiders are living and beyond them you can see the woods there. So I guess that's where our little friends are coming from, from the forest behind the house. Now, as much as I like these sweet little spiders that are so cute and so interesting, one thing I also really like about them is that they don't like to live in the house. They want to stay outside. Ugh, oh, that really endears them to my heart. They're not like those granddaddy long legs that are just hanging around by the door waiting for you to open the door so they can run in. No, they are staying out here with the okra and out in the trees. Oh, that's a special kind of spider as far as I'm concerned. As you can see in the web, there are these sort of thicker white parts, which uh, scientists believe they put that there so birds will see it. 
Obviously, I didn't, not <laughs> because I hit it to me with my hat. But the idea is that it'll keep birds from flying into the web. Of course, we don't know what the mind of a spider thinks. They have to be awfully smart to make these webs, as far as I'm concerned. Some people call them kite spiders. And you can see why, because here, when they're hanging in their web against the sky, they look just like a kite flying up in the air. They're also called star spiders. Well, and that's sort of obvious because they look like a six-pointed star. In some places, they call them crab spiders because they look just like a little crab. Sometimes, the spiny or weaver spiders share webs. Another thing that I find really clever about this little spider is that it makes an unusual egg sac. Most of the spiders I know make a uh, round, fat egg sac and they deposit their eggs in there and hang around and wait till the babies hatch. And this one, on the other hand, it's so smart, it took a leaf on the okra plant and, or it, it wasn't it because this one is not ready to lay its eggs yet. They evidently die after they lay their eggs. So since she's alive, she hasn't laid her eggs yet. But some other spiny orb weaver female went ahead and very cleverly took one of the okra leaves and bent it over and then held it bent over with her web. I mean, it must have been amazing to see that little creature handling that to it has got to be a huge leaf. So it, it fixed it up with the web so that the leaf stays bent over and in that little cave, that hiding place, is where the female lays her eggs. And evidently shortly after she lays them, she dies. Then when the babies hatch, they stay in that sheltered little area in that little cave under the leaf for a little while. And then eventually they um, wander out and get used to the rest of the world. So I am very, very happy to have this little spiny orb weaver king to me company here in my garden. Because you know, during the whole pandemic when we haven't had the usual social interactions the way we used to, uh, we don't travel like we used to, we don't see our kids or grandkids the way we used to, we're just basically at home. My garden has been so important to me and little creatures that come to visit me in the garden, especially little beneficial creatures like this little one and this little one, have become, from my point of view, great buddies. Of course, like I said, we don't know what the spider's thinking. I think it was clever enough to figure out how to make the arch so that normally I would not break the web when I walk through. So it's got to be pretty smart, but I don't think it's got affection for humans the way I'm feeling affection for it. It's Carol Ann Chapman, and I'm the author of When We Were Gods, which is a chronicle of my past life memories of the marvelous world of Atlantis. While I was writing the book, I received a visit from an otherworldly being, Pan, Lord of the Wild, he said that he had a message for mankind and he wanted to be in the book. So I gave him a chapter in the book and Pan said that nature really needed our help. And amazingly, what nature wants the most from us is appreciation for all that it does for us. And he made the suggestion that we all grow something. And you know, when you grow something, you find out it's not that easy 
to make things grow. And in my video on growing this little container garden up on my balcony, I had a number of failures, but then I had to find out what to do to make them work. And it did really help me to appreciate all that nature does, because just think of that woods behind me. It's not going through the kind of trouble I had to go through, watering, fertilizing, pollinating, all the things I had.